Hello everyone, it's Dan King here from Fireside Strategic. Welcome to our video cast, Humanity Builds Better Businesses, where we celebrate leaders that do transformational work within organizations, helping their clients grow and lead teams with humanity. Today, I'm happy to chat with Joey Crampton, founder of the 360 Coaching Group. Joey, welcome to the show, and please tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Excited to be here. Yeah, so I am a certified coach and also a chartered accountant, and I help people with mental fitness coaching. So I help them find the gift and the positivity in every situation, good, bad, and, uh, and help them uh, stay in that essence of who they are even in the most trying situations. So they don't get hijacked and, and, and negative and activate the negativity in those around them. Hmm. That's so much richness to pick up on there. I'm curious, can you define mental fitness for us? What is that and why should we, why should we try to build it? Yeah, oh, great, thank you. Um, so mental fitness is defined as your ability to handle challenges with positivity and grace, as opposed to negativity, upset, and overwhelm. So just like physical fitness, where, you know, if somebody says to you, um, hey, let's go for a, for a 5k run, and you're in pretty good shape, and you say, sure, let's go. And now, um, you know, you, you handle it with, with grace, right? Mm. And, and ease. But now they say, let's do a 25K run. And you're like, hmm, right? That's going to take a lot more effort and a lot, I'm probably going to need some more recovery time, right? And what we say is that with mental fitness, um, you know, the higher the mental fitness you have, the more of those peaks and valleys of life that you can handle. Mm. And from a leadership perspective, if you think about this, how do we communicate um, through other channels besides what we actually say, right? A lot of leaders struggle with not getting their message across. They say, I told that person uh, something and yet it doesn't seem to have gotten through, right? Well, think of how you say things, right? If you say thing, what's unsaid, right? So mm -hmm. if you say, hey, Dan, I'm really happy to be here. Like, uh, you know, and, and or you say, Oh, Dan, you know, I, I really didn't want to do this today. I hate this place. I don't want to, right? It's completely different, right? And what do you actually hear? Mm. You don't hear the words that I'm saying. You say the tone, you hear the, you, you actually hear what's communicated is actually what's not said, right? So if you yeah. can, if you're in that difficult situation and you're able to find that calm, um, mental fitness, where that positivity is still there, even in the most difficult situations, then you're able to communicate much better, right? People are getting mm -hmm. that higher level, that essence of who you are, that creativity and that positivity. So uh, again, um, you know, take it back to maybe like a sports coach, right? If it's just continual yelling, people eventually tune it out. Right. But if you're able to, to activate the different ways to motivate people like the best sports coaches do, that's that's when you're most effective. Hmm. Again, a lot of richness to unpack. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, it seems like if I'm communicating with someone, me as communicator can benefit from mental fitness because I'm going to be more relaxed, maybe be more careful and more empathetic in how I communicate, but also the recipient of the communication is going to be more at ease. They're going to listen. They're going to pick up subtleties in the message. So it's almost like regardless of where you are in communication, the more mentally fit you are, the more you're going to interpret that message in an empathetic, calm kind of way. And maybe also, if you don't understand something, the more, the easier it is to realize, oh, I didn't get that. And to sort of ask for clarification. It's like you're, in a way, what you do is facilitating clear empathetic communication is that kind of a fair statement yeah yeah exactly well you know um i i, I read this thing a few years ago and, and the guy um you know think about when your boss typically comes in the office if you're you know you're sitting at your desk they might come you know in in the in to the front of you they might come behind you 
and, and think of how hijacked you feel, right? Mm. Now what you were going to say, you're stumbling with your words. You're, you know, you don't, you, you know, you're, you're not sure what they're, they're there for, or even worse sometimes getting called into the boss's office. Hey, do you got a second? Right. A lot of people in that situation think, okay, this is the day I'm going to get fired. Right. <laughs> That's how hijacked we can become. Right. Yeah. And so with greater mental fitness, well, what I say is that the, that hijack might still happen to, but what we're going to do is we're going to lower the, the depth of that hijack. Right. So we're going to, mm. we're going to, we're going to uh, decrease the intensity of it and the length of it. So if that interaction typically had you hijacked, say for the rest of the day, what we say is with greater mental fitness, now maybe you're going to be hijacked for 10 minutes or maybe five minutes, right? Awesome. And so that's the analogy towards the, the physical fitness, right? If yeah. you're in good shape, that 5K run feels like nothing. If you're in even better shape, maybe that 25K feels like nothing, right? So now not only does the boss come in, but the boss and his boss come in. Uh, now, how are you able to handle that, right? Mm. Or her boss, mm. right? So mm. um, that's where this, this strengthening of these mental muscles builds that capacity and and now take that out of your work life and bring it into your home life or you're you know you're dealing with a, a difficult person outside of work or um you know maybe you're dealing with a with an aging parent uh, so one of my clients had that exact thing happen and her dad she's she said to me you know my dad is always negative he's always complaining mm. and through the mental fitness training that she took with me, she was able to find empathy for him. Mm. And she said, my relationship with my father is completely changed. And by bringing that, that level of mental fitness to her interactions with him, his negativity started to decrease. Mm. So it doesn't just have benefits in the work life. Yeah. That's a beautiful case study. And I think description of some of the outcomes that our C-suite audience could expect, you know, where they to do mental fitness training. I'm curious to learn a little bit more about the how. So how do we become more mentally fit? Are you a personal trainer for mental fitness? Um, how do we become more mentally fit? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess I am. I, I, I never thought of myself <laughs> in those terms, but uh, for sure, that, that's exactly what I am. So yeah, I've taken the, the training, um, so the research is based on um, uh, some of the latest breakthroughs in, in positive psychology, in mm -hmm. neuroscience, and um, and there's a lot of uh, mental or uh, a lot of research that's been done in this, and it's kind of all highlighted in the in the book called Positive Intelligence by Shirzad Shamin. And so this program is is has been created by him, and I'm a practitioner of it, and um, so. But what we do is we, uh, there's three core muscles that you work on with mental fitness. Okay. So the first one is what we call the saboteur interceptor. Mm. So if you think of positivity and negativity in the mental fitness nomenclature, what it means or what we call it is the negative is the saboteur, the, 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 the self-sabotage that we do. The positivity is the sage, that essence of who you are, all that good creative, creativeness, and resourcefulness that's inside of you. And then the third one is that is that mental command to be able to stop even in the most stressful situations and, 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 and activate that sage, choose to ignore the negativity. And mm. so what we work on is those three core muscles. And, and one of the ways we do that is we, we do mini meditations and we call them mm. PQ reps. Mm. So the book is called Positive Intelligence. And um, uh, so PQ stands for Positive Intelligence Quotient. And so um, uh, these, these mini meditations can be done anytime throughout the day. And so um, mm. just like you would grab, if you said, you know, Joey, if I was your personal trainer, you said, hey, Joey, I wanna build up my bicep. I'd say, well, let's grab a dumbbell and let's start doing some curls, right? Well, if you want to build that mental fitness, what I say is let's, let's do some PQ reps. Mm. And what, what the research shows is that with an intense initial practice of this is a, a seven week program of uh, there's a smartphone app and it activates you throughout the day 
it gives you reminders to do those reps and challenges to you to think differently throughout the day. So mm. There's a challenge every morning and then there's reps throughout the day. Mm. So just like, just like you, you know, if you say, I want to build that muscle and you grab the dumbbell and you do a couple reps, you go, okay, I'm done. Well, you're not going to build that much muscle, right? But if you hit the gym every day or on some sort of, you know, intense schedule, you're going to see some difference, right? And so that's what we know that we need to do. That's what the research shows with mental fitness is we need to do that intense initial practice to be able to kind of defeat the, that negativity, to overcome that. Because if you just do one rep a day, yeah, right? You're going you're gonna to be, it, it's not going to be enough, right? So. Yeah, yeah. This is a daily practice and it's a daily practice for our minds, which are such important and yet weirdly neglected parts of ourselves, right? Um, the mind plays such a huge role in determining who we are and how we show up and to neglect exercising it is kind of crazy if you think about it, but a vast majority of us do. What, why is that, do you think? Well, I think there's a bit of a stigma around it. You know, people, mm. you know, I, 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 I hope that as a society, we've become, you know, better at acknowledging mental health issues. And, um, but, um, you know, that's, that's one of the factors. But I think another factor is people just don't see the tools out there. You know, you mm. walk into a gym and you go, okay, well, this is, <laughs> this is, you know, I grab a weight and I start doing this or I go on the treadmill. Right. And there's, and there's, there's more kind of like, um, sort of knowledge and, and, and it's something that you can see. Right. Mm. But, um, I believe until this program has come along this mental fitness program, I, I don't think people really recognize the tools and when people see it and they go, Oh yeah, I am being stuck in these this self-sabotage and it's holding me back from my real true potential mm. that's when they start to understand it a little bit more so i honestly i think it's 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 exposure to a big degree um you know the the uh oh, i lost my train of thought there but there was <laughs> there was something else uh i was gonna say about the the fact that when we were able to to activate the this Oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> the, um, that negativity, think about this, Dan, when you're in that negativity, you're not who you are. Hmm. Right? Hmm. You and I talked about this before, right? Maybe you're the shadow part of who you are. Hmm. But so every minute of the day that you're in that negativity, you're not really living. You're not who you are. Hmm. So you're giving up parts of your life. And what's more valuable than your life? There's nothing more valuable, right? And so if I can, through a dedicated practice, if I can help you stay in positivity, you're gonna, you basically have more time in your life. You have, I'm giving you life in a way, you know? The implications of this are so fascinating. You know, if we're not who we are when we get trapped in these negative cycles. And then there's gonna be other parts of the day where we are who we are and we're, we're in positivity. It's like our will isn't united. All of us is not moving in the same direction and thus we're gonna get there so much more slowly than if our will was unified, if we were who, in other words, if we were who we were 24 seven. Yeah, yeah, right. And think, okay, now think of the stressful, situation right so all of a sudden the stressful situation comes how many how many times does this happen to you it's happened to me thousands of times right totally. get into a stressful situation you say something or do something react in a reactive way because when you're in a stressful situation what happens your options all of a sudden become very limited mm. right you, you, it just narrows down fight flight or freeze right for most yeah. of us yeah. and and then you say something you do something that you and then a few hours later, a few days later, maybe a few weeks later, you're calm and you're re and you relaxed. Maybe you're at the beach or you're taking a nice walk in the park or whatever it is. And you go, wow, who was I? That wasn't me. I should have done this. Like, I actually care about people. Why did I say that hurtful thing? Why did mm -hmm. I walk away? Why did I do something that isn't me? Mm. So here's the thing, if we can increase that mental fitness, 
what I strive to do is give you that you, that essence of who you are in even the most stressful situations. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, changing gears for a second. I'm curious how, how someone with accounting training gets interested in mental fitness. I mean, that it's not a typical path, right? I'm <laughs> curious to learn just a little bit more about your journey and what led you to do this work? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I don't know anyone else that uh, has this interesting combination, but uh, I feel like there's there's part of it, um, just before I go into the background, there's part of it where people are, are going, hey, he accounting accountable, right? This is somebody that, that understands mm-hmm. accountability mm-hmm. and understands um, 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 confidentiality, because that's a big part of accounting, right? And really understands that kind of stuff. And, and, and now you take that and you put that together with somebody who has the certifications and the tools from a coaching perspective. And they, it's, it creates this really interesting um, combination for people. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, my journey, my journey was actually, um, I, uh, I ended up t- getting my, my CPA actually through night school. I, I went to university at night and uh, didn't finish till I was in my early 30s, and um, and you know thought that my career path was accounting for you know until retirement. Um, but like a lot of us, um, I got to uh, kind of my late 40s, and and a few different things happened. My father passed away. Um, uh, came to terms with that, and uh, some changes in my personal life with my relationships and my family, and I. Uh, I just started examining everything and I'd really been into self-development and reading books and taking courses and all that stuff since I was in my mid twenties. It's always been a really kind of more like a hobby. It's been something that I've just always been interested in. And, um, and I started to realize that sitting in front of a computer all day and, and hashing out numbers and, and, and dealing with that monthly cycle that accounting is, just really wasn't where my heart was anymore. Mm. And um, I think I honestly, I feel like I came out of my shell. You know, I've always mm. been very empathetic and, and, and loved connecting with people. But I think the shyness that I had growing up and uh, some of the um, challenges that I had pushed me away from dealing with people. And, um, and, I, and I think I in a lot of ways, I think like a lot of other people, I, I feel like I discovered who I truly am. And mm. um, so I, you know, I quit my job and I uh, started my own um, firm and um, took all the coaching certifications through the Coaches Training Institute. And um, yeah, and I, I'm just, uh, you know, just loving it. Just this is, I feel like I, I'm truly who I am when I'm coaching and when I'm trying to, uh, to help people and see things that they might not see. Well, and, and it's really interesting. You say that I was sort of listening between the lines and, and helping people see things that they might not see. I, I imagine, even though in your heart, you knew that accounting wasn't really for you, it wasn't your destiny. It probably equipped you with a detail orientation as well. Not just this sort of ability to hold others to account, but this detail orientation to help others see what they may not see requires such sensitivity to detail. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I'm, I'm curious whether, you know, that might've been an inevitable part of the journey and, and is as much as it may not be where you want to allocate most of your time, it may be really valuable to you and your clients that, that you did go through that initial step before finding what you're truly meant to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's also given me some experience in, you know, working with people at the, you know, I worked all the way up to the CFO level. Um, you know, I, so I, so I, I rub shoulders with, with all sorts of different people in a lot of different industries. That's the thing with accounting mm. too, right? You can mm. work in any industry. So yeah. I've worked in the automotive industry. I've worked in the, in the, in the service industry, uh, you know, in, in a number of different industries. I, I, I did a lot of uh, computer, in, computer um, accounting uh, mm-hmm. installations even and training of people back, um, back in the early 2000s. So, 
you know, they're, they're, it's a real breadth of experience in a lot of different and, and grow, like working for really fast growing small companies and, and working for bigger companies that are more, much more established. And, 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 uh, and it just gives you this breadth of, of understanding people's motivations, understanding yeah. people, how people tick to a certain degree yeah. and, and how people respond to numbers too, is really interesting. I find, mm. you know, present mm. them with what uh, uh, a lot of people might say, here's the facts, right? <laughs> here's the facts, here's the numbers. And they go, well, I, I feel like we're doing good. And I'm like, mm, here's the numbers, like, <laughs> right? So then how do you respond to that? Like, what is, what is the, um, what is the reaction to that? What is, is that, a, is that, is that pushing people? Is that not pushing people? Some people respond really well to it. They go, oh, I, I like to see the, you know, I like to tick all the boxes and I like to see the needle moving and other yeah. people, they, they're not so much, right? They're mm. more, they, they want to, they want to sort of ignore that more, I guess, to a certain degree. Mm. That's good. Mm. And sometimes it's not, but yeah. yeah. Speaking of different industries, I'm, I'm curious um, where you see yourself sort of taking mental fitness and taking your coaching work. Is there a particular type of industry or organization where you're really excited to do this work? For you, is it just a matter of bringing it to as many organizations as possible? Just curious to learn a little bit more about the organizations that, that you're looking to work with. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't... Uh... I mean, uh, obviously, it, I I believe that there's there's value in it for any any industry, but I, I really think that from a sales perspective, this is can be really powerful because mm. as a salesperson, so think of we go back to that communication we talked about at the beginning, right? And think of if you as a salesperson um, can stay in that sage, and even if you're prospect your customer is in some negativity then through the beauty of of uh, mirror neurons and and just be right we we pick up from the people around us we pick up their mood and their and that positivity like i talked about at the beginning right so think about if you're able to through nonverbal communication and verbal communication communicate that beautiful essence of who you are and bring mm. that out in your in your prospect or your customer. Mm. How much easier the sales process could be. Mm. Yes, yes. So salespeople in particular, you think could could and sales organizations could really benefit from mental fitness. That's that's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Um, so uh, one or one or two more questions as we come towards the end of our time together today, Joey. Curious. Do you have any sort of big goals for 2021? What's what's exciting you most to do uh, in this this next year? We're at the beginning of a year, so it's often a time when people like to think about, hey, what do I really want to achieve this year? So, well, what's big on your list for 2021? Mm, yeah, good question, <laughs> Dan. Uh, I I, uh, I actually did um, a lot of planning around 2021, and uh, I you know what what I like to slot in first. So if you if you think of 52 weeks. What are you going to slot in those 52 weeks? What's the most important thing? And I'd say the most important thing is to plan your vacation first. Love it. Love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when, I'm, when am I going to take some time off next summer? And hopefully we'll be able to travel and I can go see some family and yeah. I can do some fun things. And now yes. I have something to look forward to. Right now I have, now I, I know that I, 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 I have slotted in some self-care and and how i'm going to feel about that right think of the times when you book a vacation for for some of us that live in the northern climes you know we we often book winter vacations and uh say it's in february right well now the whole time it starts to get cold from november on we're looking forward to that week away on the beach right think of how powerful that is right so if you can book that in now even if it's not um you know super detailed but you know that there's something coming right so that's a big one right um and yeah i i uh my goal is to to get into bring this mental fitness into at least two organizations that's my goal for the year to just start it get it going and uh what we're offering now from mental fitness perspective is you could buy like a subscription and so you uh, say if you're an organization of 
of hundreds of people or, or however many people you have, you, you'll be able to put all of your employees through the mental fitness program in a, mm. in a group setting led by me. Mm. And, and I can take uh, each, you know, uh, groups of employees through this program. Now think of how powerful this is. If, if your management team, your employees have a common way to communicate. And when they see one of their, um, one of their, their coworkers or one of their fellow managers or leaders getting into getting hijacked, right? They can, they can gently call it out and they could say, Hey, are you sure you're not getting hijacked there? Mm. And, and bring some sage to that, right? Yeah. Think of how much, so, so think of how powerful this is, right? If that if you're giving up who you are when you're in that negativity, um, think of your company giving that up when your whole team is in that negativity, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so, so that's my goal, uh, um, Dan, is to, is to take this into two organizations awesome. and, and to really get that ball rolling. So I've been doing it uh, you know, in, in small groups now with individuals yeah. and bringing individuals together with some accountability um, in a group setting. But mm-hmm. what I really love to do that is, is for whole companies and take people through in stages and, and really allow them to have that uh, common language and that, that common um, way to, to see things. Exciting, exciting. And last question, your, your answer was actually a perfect segue to this. You know, you, you mentioned that you plug your vacations into the calendar first when you're planning a year. What's fun for you when you're not working, when you're not doing accounting, you're not coaching? What do you do for fun? Uh, so um, one of my, probably my favorite thing to do is, is go getting into nature. So going out hiking, um, I'm lucky enough to live where there's snow. So I do uh, cross country skiing. I do snowshoeing. Um, I, uh, I like to go ride my bike in the summer um, and uh, love camping, um, stand up paddle boarding in the summer, that sort of stuff. So I love to get out in nature. A um, um, couple, uh, even in the summer, uh, go for bigger canoe trips. So that was uh, vacations that I've had in with my son, go up for three or four nights out in the middle of nowhere and uh, see some nature and, and uh, enjoy it. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I love to do. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Well, well, listen, I love this conversation. Really, really enjoyed learning about fit, mental fitness, learning about your journey. And, and I'm confident that our, our audience will as well, Joey. Thank you so much for having me again. My pleasure.